Hi everyone, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, today I'm going to bring you the things that I liked and the things that I hated about the MSC Bellissima. And yeah, it's a brand new ship. It's a gorgeous ship, but she had some issues. Because I like to end on a positive note, I'm going to start off with the negative things that I did not like about the MSC Bellissima. First off, let's talk about the main dining room. The main dining, I ate there twice and it was a hit one night and a miss the next night. So it really, it was inconclusive. But that second night's meal was not very good. So I will say that. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the main dining as far as the food quality was concerned. And let's tie in the buffet with that. Again, the food quality in the buffet was good food, just not very much selection. And the hours in the buffet seemed to be really strange. Like I would go up at like 5 o'clock expecting to see like a full buffet up there at 5 o'clock. That's dinner time for a lot of people. And find out that... 80% of it is closed and there's just the front end with some burgers and some pizza and no uh, I wasn't a fan of the way they organized the main dining in the buffet. Number two was the pricing on some of these. Uh, I compared it to the MSC Seaside which I was on a week earlier. So for instance I liked the Formula One racing and in the MSC Bellissima it was 10 US dollars for a five minute ride. Great, okay, there's the price. Now I go on to the Bellissima and that same five minutes on that same Formula One racing is now 10 euros, which is 20% more than that $10 US. In fact, in Canada, it was almost double the cost of a Canadian dollar uh, compared to a $1.35 uh, for a US dollar, so yeah, same thing, same event, much higher price. A little bit about the design of the ship. That corridor, that main corridor with the lights up above, the LED screens and everything is absolutely gorgeous. It's huge, it's long, it's wide, it's open. And it, you know, the shops themselves aren't necessarily right on the edge of that concourse. You actually have to walk into a little bit of a corridor and the shops are even further in. So I really, I, I like that part of it, but what I didn't like about the designs of the ship is a lot of areas seem to be blocked off to get where you want to go. Um, if you wanted to get up on some of the top decks, it was all, it was like, how do I get out? How do I get to the pool area? How do I get to the walking area up above the pool area? Everywhere I went, it seemed to be a dead end. I'd run into the yacht club or I'd run into the gym or I'd run into something that was blocking me from getting there. Basically, it ended up that no matter where and what deck I wanted to go on, I ended up just heading up to the buffet deck and heading out that one door and then walk upstairs everywhere because Literally, if I went to the rear of the ship and I'd went up, I couldn't get out. MSC Yacht Club couldn't get through. I could see a door, but I'm not an MSC Yacht Club member, so I can't get out that door because I needed the special key. So it just seemed hard to get outside. Uh, of course, the weather wasn't helping me neither, so I really didn't want to go outside. But when I tried, it, it just wasn't a very good layout. A thing I found that I didn't like, and some people may, this is just my feeling, was that balcony that I was in. Loved the room, the balcony was spacious, but that overhang, it, at first I thought, well, you know, it's gonna protect me from the rain and everything's good, and, but it, it just started feeling like I couldn't see a great view. I just saw the overhang. Whenever I looked out, I saw the overhang. I didn't see what's coming off in the distance. And it just, by the end of that cruise, I absolutely hated the view from my balcony. And I would never book that balcony again. There's other places on the ship that don't have that overhang. 
So, you know, if you want to go on the MSC Bellissima, I would recommend you looking at that, unless this, this just doesn't, doesn't bother you at all. But I have a feeling whenever you sign up for like a guaranteed balcony, these are one of the ones you're going to get. The next one is hard for me because it's, it's, it's not really that big of a complaint. It's just an inconvenience is the amount of languages they speak every time they announce something. So they did this before at the launch of the MSC Seaside as well, when she first launched, and a lot of people complained about it. Literally, they spoke in English, German, French, I think it was Japanese, Spanish, Portuguese, and Russian for every single announcement. So now pity the poor guy up on stage in the shows trying to get you excited for the show and he has a speech saying the exact same thing in eight languages. And by the end, people are like, and he goes, and here's the show. And by then everyone is like, yeah, okay, whatever. Are you done? So I understand maybe like subtitles on a screen or something. Keep it to the two most popular languages on the ship, probably Italian or uh, French or German. There were a lot of Germans on board as well. But I understand that it's a, it's a universal multilingual uh, passengers. There's a lot of passengers out there. But I'm sitting beside an Italian couple beside me who spoke very, very little English. And I was speaking with a Japanese couple beside me and they all said the exact same things. Oh my goodness, this goes on forever. An announcement of the show, the same, the, the 30 second announcement should not take eight minutes. And I, I felt sorry. Maybe they'll address this as they go forward. But, but the first night you're going, okay, this is fine. Great. The second night and the third night and the fourth night, it, you know, you almost don't want to show up until the show starts. It's, it was, it started to get that annoying. And finally, while we're on that subject of shows, I just came off the seaside. Again, I have to go back to the seaside because it's the same company and this ship is the newer ship. So the seaside had a lot of problems when she launched. People hated the shows. It was too opera. They needed more Broadway shows, more comedy. And so they have the uh, the four people who do the improv comedy and they had more Broadway shows, not just opera. They had an opera night, but they also had you know, Broadway shows, theater shows, dancing. They mixed in Cirque du Soleil performances. Well, in the main, main theater, uh, there, there was really none of that in the Bellissima. There were two Broadway shows, and there was shows like we had a mime um, that's like was doing an ostrich thing. Um, and then we had a shadow puppet guy doing like, you know, he was, they were really good at what they do, but for 40 minutes, it's, it seems too long for that kind of performance. It, for a five minute or a 10 minute part of a show, a collab of a show, great. That would be perfect. But as a whole 40 minute show, no matter how good it is, it's still the same thing over and over again. It's a mime, no voice, no talking, no nothing. It's a shadow puppet. No matter how many faces you do with your shadow puppet, eventually they all start to look almost the same. And that's unfortunately what happened with this. And I'm not the only one who felt that way. I talked to lots of people around me in the rows and got their opinions on it. And they said it was great at the beginning. And literally in one of the shows, um, by the end of the show, a good one third of the people had left. And that's not, not a good sign. Uh, so I think they really need to do something about their entertainment on board. I love the entertainment in the shows. Now, on the flip side of that, Cirque du Soleil show, which I wasn't able to do because I booked my cruise at the last moment and it was already sold out because, get this, they only had two shows on the entire 
eight day sailing two shows of their number one entertainment venue on the ship they said there'll be more in future cruises but for my lucky cruise <laughs> you see how i get lucky on some of these cruises uh it wasn't available so i wasn't able to see it i did talk to some friends that i met on board and they said it was fantastic it was spectacular so i'm going to take everyone's word for it that that part of the show is good if it's anywhere near the circus performers that were on the seaside during some of their shows i can just imagine how great that show was and as far as the singing is concerned in the main theater that was it was pretty good. You can tell they're new. This is the first sailing, remember? So they did, They hadn't quite meshed yet as a family unit kind of thing, as a group. But you can see it evolving, and you can see that it's going to get better and better as they go along. So I have no fear that say that the theater show parts are going to be fantastic. They're going to be great. But uh, they got to mix it up more. I They either have to bring in a comedian or something, but... Like the shadow puppets, uh, I, I, it might be some people's cup of tea, and it's, it just wasn't mine. Okay, enough negativity. Now on with the positive stuff. First off, let's talk about my room. I actually preferred my balcony on this ship than I did on the seaside. And one of the big reasons for that was the desk layout that was in this actually had drawers in it where it didn't have it on the seaside. Those drawers added so much more closet space and storage space to the room, it's almost like it doubled my storage space. Just having drawers in a desk and the desk had lots of room to set up my computer and do some work and all this stuff. Uh, the colors were a little subdued. They're more of a brown than the seaside was a purple, a brighter color. But as far as functionality is concerned and cleanliness and design, I was perfectly happy with the room. Other than that, the balcony. Now food, specialty restaurants. I ate in all four specialty restaurants and uh, had a little hiccup in the tapas uh, where it just seemed to be still setting up, still I'm not quite understanding what their roles are and how to work and everything. But as far as the food was concerned, all four specialty restaurants, the food was fantastic. I did not have a bad meal at any of the specialty restaurants. So great job there. I highly recommend them. They have those three and four restaurant packages that you can get on the ship earlier. Uh, you can order online before you get there, and it's at a much reduced price than if you bought them on the ship. I highly recommend doing that because, uh, quite frankly, it was great meals and far superior to the main dining restaurant. Next, as far as activities is concerned, let's talk about the sports area. Their sports area is even larger than that was on the MSCC side. They have two Formula One racers, so you can race against a friend of yours. They have 3D uh, maze where you put on the 3D goggles and you're inside and you walk around. It's like a sensory thing. They have a huge basketball court. They have uh, lots of video games. They have the bowling alley. There's lots the the 4D theater. They have it's it's huge. There's lots of things to do for the young and old. Doesn't matter how old you are. You can have a lot of fun there. Uh, so that area on the ship was uh, my favorite place on the ship. Also, the kids areas with the rope courses and the pools and the splash zones at the rear of the ship. Another great area, especially if you have kids. Unfortunately, on my days, it was raining and cold, but you can see if you were in, on a sunny day and a warm day, the kids would be all over that area. It was huge. It was a large space, lots of water slides, lots of entertainment area for the kids to run around and just, just have a ball. So yeah, kids on this ship will have a lot of fun. Of course, I can't talk about a new ship without just talking about the looks. The design of the ship is beautiful. Everything is just immaculate. Marble everywhere. The shops don't just look like souvenir shops. They look like expensive high-end shops, even though you're just getting cups and keychains inside. They also have them set aside out of the main lobby. So the whole main lobby is wide open, beautiful. They have the chocolate shop in there with all kinds of chocolate. I 
probably spent about a hundred dollars and probably gained about 10 pounds in that sh chocolate shop alone i bought i tried one of everything and uh, it was really good i just you know me and my vices of chocolate so the design the beauty of the ship is you can't that 3d ceiling with this 3d ceiling well the led ceiling uh with you know i can just imagine it at christmas with pretend snowflakes coming and if they actually set up like those things they have in disney to make it snow hey there's an idea msc i'm giving it to you for free but can you imagine with the that going on at christmas time it would just be spectacular spectacular and so i i have to give it to them a ship is absolutely gorgeous from top to bottom as it should be for a brand new ship next i'm going to talk about the staff the staff on board was very very pleasant everybody was nice they were willing to talk to you they weren't rushed uh, part of my problem with the msc seaside was they didn't have enough bartenders here they seemed to have enough bartenders i didn't have to wait when I was there, although I did hear some people complaining about one or two bars on the ship, but I'm not a big drinker, so it didn't affect me too, too much. Uh, however, uh, from what I saw, you know, there was no issues. Uh, I made friends with the, the ladies who were, and gentlemen who were working in the sports areas with the Formula One racers, and we had uh, a lot of conversations and we joked around and everything. It was, uh, everybody was just really friendly. Even when I was walking around in the pouring rain up around the, the kids' areas with the rope courses, there's still people out there who have to work. They have to be there in case somebody does want to go in that area. And they're, they're just soaking wet and everything, but they're up there smiling and how am I? And they offered to, to film me while I was up there and take my camera. And you know, so they were very, very helpful. Uh, can't say enough good things. The staff was really, really nice. Got along with everybody. There you go. That's the MSC Bellissima. Some of the things I hated and some of the things I loved. Uh, personally, the shows, as, as far as the Broadway part was concerned, and I hear the Cirque du Soleil is great. Those other shows, just not my cup of tea. They may be other people's. Other people may just love that. But from what I saw in the theater with people leaving, you know, halfway into the show, I have to feel more people were siding on my side than were siding on the entertainment side. And I felt bad because the entertainers were good at what they did. It, it, just, it just went on too long. And uh, as far as the language is concerned, I, you may just have to put up with it. It's a European cruise with a huge multicultural passenger list. And so they're trying to please everybody. And so I can see that that's just something of mine when I, I felt this poor guy up on stage before the show trying to pump everybody up for the performance, but his speech in so many languages just took the life out of the audience and nobody was cheering by the end when he shouted out pink or uh, no, it just didn't work. But overall, I will try to ship again. I'm gonna give them about six months or so to, to work out some of their issues, get their, their training down properly in the restaurants. The food has been great as far as the specialty restaurants, highly recommend them. Spend that little extra money. It's not that, it was under $100 for four restaurant specialty meals. So that's not that expensive at all. Uh, so I would definitely try that. But as far as uh, overall right now on the ship, uh, the ship is beautiful. It was fun. Avoid those balconies unless you know what you're getting into. Uh, as a photographer and a videographer, uh, that ledge right there just annoyed the crap out of me. <laughs> and I just, I wouldn't book that one again. But the rooms are great. The ships were great. Specialty restaurants were great. Some of the entertainment was really good. The ship is beautiful. The sports area was a lot of fun and the staff was very friendly. All in all, that's, that's pretty good. So if they can iron out some of those little flaws, and even those little flaws were more my personal taste. Give the MSC Bellissima a try for yourself. Check out some other vloggers who have been on board as well because I'm a North American and then they, you have some European vloggers who have been on the ship. So see what their opinion is because it might be a total opposite of somebody who lives in North America. So you have to do your research, but at least uh, now you know what uh, you kind of feel that what I look for on a cruise ship is good food, clean ship, 
good entertainment. This ship had most of that. So I'd have to give it a thumbs up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.